Hey guys, welcome back. You can tell by the grin on my face and by the title of this video that we're playing more Kingdom Death Monster. I finally got a hold of uh, an expansion. It's not ideal, but it's, it's content and I'm starving for some Kingdom Death content. So, um, we're going to be adding the uh, Spidicules, Spidiculi, Spidiculus. I wonder how you pronounce that. Okay, so it's supposed to be it's supposed to be like ridiculous, but also uh, could be Hercules. So let's go with Spidiculies. So we're going to be playing the Spidiculies expansion. Um, the non-ideal part. I don't want to pay two or three times the expansion MSRP. So I bought um, the expansion, the Spidiculis expansion, without the minis. So I just have the cards, the rule book, the terrain. Uh, I've got everything else except for the minis. So I have a 3D printer and I am uh, in the middle of printing something that I think would be a good proxy for the Spidiculis mini. I don't know if I'll be able to get it that big um, just because it's it's a gigantic mini and I really wish I could get it, but it's just not gonna happen. In the in the market right now, I, I refuse to pay $200, $300, $400 for an expansion that I could get for $100 and 60 or 70 at Black Friday. like. I mean, I, I just, I'm not gonna do it. I, I love this game so much. I, I've spent hours 3D printing, painting, you know, I, I, I um, you know, I've, I've honed my, my collection as much as possible with, with what I have, but, you know, I, I just, I just can't, I can't justify spending that much money on expansions. So this is a good gateway until I can make it till Black Friday and hopefully, hopefully they'll restock and I'll get like the Dragon King or the Gorm or the Dung Beetle Knight. Oh, any of those. I'm, I'm dying here, guys. I really am. I, I, I really want to play all those expansions, but, but it's, it's just not in the cards right now. So, Spidiculis is one of the expansions. I'm playing another expansion. So, you might think... Josh, like you just said that you were having a really hard time finding expansions. I'm playing the Drifter Knight. And you say, what's the Drifter Knight exactly? Well, it's it's a fan-created content. It's actually um, the, uh, the content creation group made it. And it looks really cool. They have a, a 3D model that I printed for it and everything. So I've printed the cards off. Um, one unfortunate thing, so I don't have access to a color printer right now, so all the cards are just are black and white. So they're not, they're not perfect, but it's playable, and um, it looks really cool. So, so we're going to be playing Spidiculis, and we're going to be playing the Drifter Knight. So the uh, Spidiculis comes into play in Lantern Year 2. Uh, it replaces the, the Screaming Antelope. And um, then the Drifter Knight comes in. It looks like Lantern Year Six. We add a uh, a parade of ghosts to the to the timeline. So uh, the first year, um, the prologue is going to be the same. The first year is going to be the same. We're going to be hunting a prologue white lion and a regular white lion, and then we'll be able to um, to face the Spidiculis for the first time. And I'm super excited about it. I'm. 3D printing all the terrain tiles uh, to fit with my 3D printed board. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I, I gotta tell you, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to dive into it. I don't know very much about it at all. I've seen the mini. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that, but um, hopefully the gameplay is fun and uh, I'll be able to get into it. Um, Drifter Knight, I, I basically know hardly anything about. I found out about it. Uh, strangely enough, I was on Thingiverse looking for uh, train. Uh, 3D printed train tiles for for my 3D printed board, and I, I I did a search for Kingdom Death, and this Drifter Knight came up, and I'm like, I've never even heard of the Drifter Knight before, and I 
clicked on the link and that led me to led me to the drifter night so um i'm, I'm excited to try it out too and it should be a lot of fun um it's just new content and it's an excuse for me to to play kingdom death again so um no matter what it's it's gonna be a blast even if we we never make it to lantern year six um uh one other thing about the drifter night since it's all 3d print or it's all printed um, so this is a settlement event card for the Drifter Knight. It's obviously not going to work with our settlement event deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, so the first day uh, settlement event card uh, gets used um, right after the prologue and then it gets archived, it gets put aside. So what I'm going to do is after this gets played, I'm going to put it in the settlement deck somewhere, shuffle it up, and then when if if I ever pull first day, I'll use the morbid fog bank. So um, that's how I'm playing it. I, I don't know what, how how we're how I'm supposed to do it, um, but that's the way I'm playing it. So uh, um, just a little bit of about my setup. Uh, I've, I've a, a new thing that I have are these cool like armor um, little like token things which I've cut up from a different 3D file um, but you you put the uh, 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 D10 on there and so you can kind of track your armor without writing on the on the card a bunch of times um, another thing I have is uh, these little tokens um, and I used these last campaign too and they're super helpful um, they they denote you can surge and dash and dodge and um, encourage. Uh, so, so as I use them, I flip them over. That means that I've already used it. It's kind of a reminder, especially when I'm playing alone. And I'm playing four different characters. It's hard to remember sometimes if like if I've used an encourage for um, somebody, and also and then the then the, these turn tokens, uh, I flip them over when I've taken the turn for that player. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the setup that I'm going for. We're gonna try it out, see how the dice work. I don't have all of these uh, printed yet, so I'm, I'm I finished one set. Uh, I've got another one curing right now, and then I'm gonna print two more. One's in the printer right now. I'm gonna print two more, so then I should have the whole setup, and I should be good to go. Um, uh, uh, another thing, so. Um, I kind of I picked this up from Hit Points Gaming, which is an awesome channel. Uh, they're actually replaying um, Kingdom Death, I heard. Um, and yeah, I watched one episode, and I think they're using Spidicules and um, the Sun God one. Uh, uh, I've only watched the first two episodes, so I haven't been spoiled with Spidicules yet, so that's great. But um, they're a great channel, and you should go watch them. Uh, husband and wife group, they're, they're a lot of fun. So, um, But... Anyways, back to my point. I'm rambling because I'm just so excited. Uh, they they come up with themes for their for their um, settlement. Uh, like right now, they're doing Disney characters. So um, at last time, I just did numbers. I d I numbered them um, as kind of like a, a ut utilitarian way of of doing it, just because they they. Um, they, they're learning this language, brand new language, so they, they just decided on numbers. But anyways, I'm not doing that this time. Um, so I thought about it. I thought about Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, um, you know, all that stuff. And, and I came up with, with an idea that's it's kind of um, great in in a not so great way, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. So uh, a very uh, lighthearted, uh, happy, um, a great book series. I, it's one of my all-time favorites, but um, I'm going to use uh, the uh, uh, Chronicles of Narnia series, and I, I googled a bunch of names, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use those names to name our survivors. So, obviously, our first four survivors are Peter, Edmund, Susan, and Lucy. Obviously, they're not going to be brothers and sisters in this campaign because we might have to use them to, to reproduce, but there you have it. So we're going with that. So, um, yeah, I, I think at this point we can just dive in and we, we face the, the prologue white lion. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to reread the, the introduction. Um, the, these, these characters, these, uh, survivors wake up with, with ink on their eyes. They have no language. Uh, they're in this, this dark landscape and only thing that, that lights the, are these lanterns that they're mysteriously have with them 
um, they are almost immediately attacked by this ferocious beast that we know as the white lion and they, they have to defend themselves with, with shards of rock that they've pulled up from the plane of stone faces so uh, with that uh, we, we've I've got the board set up um, it, the uh, the level the prologue white line has a special AI deck with claw on top so let's shuffle those up and I'm going for a little bit different format than I did last time uh, with the last campaign um, I'm gonna superimpose the cards uh, over the top rather than kind of try the different camera angles you know, with the with the new setup of my my office slash gaming room it just is not didn't work right so uh, I kind of tried it as a little like just test and to kind of reintroduce myself to the to the rules of the game um, and it just didn't it didn't work right so I'm gonna go this way uh, and and we'll, we'll see how it turns out and hopefully you guys like it if there's any critiques you have about how I could present this game better to you uh, would make it more enjoyable then uh, feel free to to comment uh, if I miss any rules I'm, I'm trying to stay as true to the rules as possible uh, without trying to cheese anything uh, I mean this is this is a brutal game for a reason and I and I and the rules are completely unfair at some point you know, at some points and that's just how it goes so uh, with that um, one other thing so I'm using these little tokens from a two of annihilation board game as survival tokens all of our survival start with one survival uh, with that um, that's it let's dive in so um, we know that claw goes on top for our AI deck and the white lion goes first so let's let's draw claw uh, closest threat facing in range, closest threat in field of view, no target sniff. So closest threat facing in range is what we look at first. All of them are exactly six faces away, so they are within range of claw. And so we can kind of pick. I think we're gonna go, uh, so this is Peter, this is Edmund, um, and then this is Susan and Lucy. So uh, we're just gonna go straight forward here, and we're gonna attack Peter. So. Let's see, and hopefully you guys can see the dice uh, rolling going on just fine through the map camera. So we're gonna attack speed two, it's on two plus. We don't have any invasion. Uh, we do have one survival so we can dodge one if we needed, but for now, two plus. Two hits, uh, so that's two hits to the, the head and the waist. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend a survival to dodge the head and I'm gonna take the waist. So that's uh, that takes away uh, my one armor in the waist from my cloth, um, and there we have it. Yeesh, not, a, not a good way to start. So, all right, so there's that. Okay, so that's, that's the White Lion's turn. So now it's our turn. Uh, now, we know that the top hit location card is Strange Hand. Um, if we crit with it, we get a plus one strength. So uh, it's kind of, um, a good strategy. Um, I, I use it every single time I play. Uh, it gives one character a plus one strength with, with a founding stone, which I don't use very often, honestly. So, um, so let's see, who are we going to do? Edmund, Susan, or Lucy? Um, let's just, let's leave it to the die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, five. One, two, three, four, five. So Susan. So Susan's going to go. She's going to chuck her founding stone. Uh, so that gets archived. Uh, she's going to automatically hit and automatically crit. So we got the strange hand. Uh, so we do a wound um, and strange hand. Uh, we have a failure reaction, but since we automatically critted, that doesn't happen. You hack off the monster's hand. Spend one survival to treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. So I'm going to add plus one permanent strength to Susan and use her survival. And we have persistent injury, lost hand. So we'll put that over here. And there you have it. So um, so that's Susan's turn. So I'm gonna flip over her token. Oh, I forgot to flip over Peter's um, dodge token as well. Uh, okay, great. So now uh, we want to get um, everyone out of the way because the white lion tends to run forward if we fail to hit. So let's have, uh, let's have Lucy come around here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, ooh. Hmm, maybe I, I should kind of set that up a little wrong, but that's okay. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. So Lucy's gonna go. She's gonna attack with her Founding Stone. 
She's going to attack at speed two. Hits on a seven plus, six plus, because we're in the blind spot. Oh, two misses. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, so that's her turn. Um, okay, Susan's gone. Uh, Edmund is going to go. Uh, actually, we're going to have Peter go. So Peter's going to come around here in the back. And he's going to attack with his Founding Stone. Speed two, six plus. Two misses. <laughs> this might be a quick campaign, guys. Uh, Peter, come on. <laughs> speed, speed two. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so Edmund. Oh, sorry. Uh, that was Peter that did it. Edmund, come on. It's your turn to go. Uh, so seven plus now because we're not in the blind spot. One hit. One single hit. The soft belly. A debilitating blow to the soft belly. Um, so the uh, white lion, the uh, level zero white lion, the prologue white lion is toughness six. We have a strength of one on the founding stone. Uh, so that's uh, five plus to wound. One. No. No wound. <laughs> oh, we had to use our... We had to use our founding stone to hurt this guy. Uh, okay, well that's everybody's turn, so all their tokens reset. All right, and now it's the white lion's turn again, so let's see what horrible thing they're gonna do to us. Chomp, closest threat facing in range. So there's nobody facing, because facing is in front of him. Closest threat in field of view. So it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be mail arm down. It's gonna be Edmund. So we're gonna turn to Edmund. And we're going to attack with speed one. Hits on a two plus. Um, and this always hits the head location. Uh, oh, persistent injury, lost hands, not no jaw. So, okay, speed one, it's on a two plus. One, yes. Whew. Okay, so nothing happens. We miss, uh, we don't hit the head location. Um, that's it, so it's our turn again. So let's get, um, let's get Edmund out of the way. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, four, just right there. We're gonna have him attack um, with the uh, Founding Stone, speed two, it's on a seven plus. One hit, the Beast's Scapular Deltoid, and this is a failure where he runs forward, so good thing we got out of the way. Um, so we have to hit on a six, uh, five, five plus to wound here, three. Oof. Okay, so that means a failure. So full move the monster forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now to range. Any survivors passed over suffer grab. So we're just gonna go forward six. Three, four, five, six. Okay, bummer. Uh, all right, so that was uh, Edmund's turn. <sighs> hmm. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, let's see. So Lucy can barely make it. Yeah, so she's gonna come in. Well, here's the problem though. Uh, if we go into the blind spot, he won't see us and he'll pick a target and turn around and come that way and we'll probably get trampled. Hmm. Boy, that's bad. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can't make it one, two, can't make it anywhere. Um, so let's, let's just have Lucy go. She'll take the hit. One, two, five. Okay, so Lucy's gone. Um, so Lucy's gone, so she's gonna attack. Her founding stone, speed two, seven plus. Two hits. Uh, the perfect hit doesn't mean anything with a founding stone, unfortunately. All right, here we go. The beast's heel and the beast's back. So the beast's heel has no failure reaction, so we're gonna go for that first. Um, and then the beast's back is a run forward again, which is great. So, beast's heel. Founding stone, five plus. Four, miss. Man, we cannot hit anything. Uh, beast back, five. That's a five. All right, that's a wound. Okay, so this, the failure reaction doesn't happen. So that's good. Now, uh, they're probably going to attack Lucy. So let's have Susan move up five. Four, five, like that. And then let's have, so that's Susan's turn. And then we're gonna have Peter uh, move forward five, two. Uh, one, two, three, four, we'll go right here. Uh, we'll go right here. 
All right, that's everybody's turn. Ugh. And that run four is just, it's, it just sucks. It's all there is to it, it just sucks. Um, all right, White Lion's turn. Enraged. <laughs> when this comes into play, draw an AI card. While Enraged is in play, the White Lion gains plus one damage token per monster level. A damage token increases the damage dealt on the monster's attack profiles. When the survivor suffers any dismembered, severe injury, or is killed, discard Enraged. So that's technically a wound, so our wound counter goes down. Boop. Um, and, um, but plus one damage token, which is not good. So we'll put that right here. Okay, and then the other AI card now. Power SWAT. Closest threat facing in range. There's nobody facing. Closest threat in field of view. That's going to be our friend Lucy. Uh, we're going to attack speed one. It's on a two plus. That's a hit. It's two damage. So Lucy is going to spend a survival and she's going to dodge that because we do not want to get it because it's two damage. We get knockback six. Um, so yeah, we're going to just dodge that one. Call it good. Okay. Our turn. Um, so we're going to have Lucy go. She's going to go one, two, three, four. She's going to come around here. She's going to attack with her founding stone. Speed two. It's on a seven plus. Two hits. Fuzzy Groin, East Flank. So the Fuzzy Groin doesn't have any failure reaction, but if we, if we crit, it's bad news. It's kind of bad news anyways. Beast Flank, uh, if we wound, cats hate this, the monster is very upset, attacker gains priority target token. So, um, okay, well, let's do the Fuzzy Groin first. So we're going to attack with the Founding Stone. So it's gonna be um, uh, five plus to hit, or to wound. Six is a wound. Fuzzy Groin gets discarded. All right, and then a five plus again for the Beast Flank. Three, no no hit. Um, so that gets, gets discarded. Uh, that's Lucy's turn. Uh, so Susan, maybe? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's do, um, let's do Peter. Peter's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So we can get all the way to the back and leave room for, um, for, uh, for Susan to go in there. So um, Peter's gonna go, he's gonna attack with his Founding Stone, hits on a six plus this time. Uh, that's two hits. Oh no, Beast Brow, but clever ploy. <coughs> the attacker is caught in the White Lion's Roost and is savagely mauled. Attacker is doomed, perform basic action targeting the attacker. He's gonna turn around. We're gonna do basic action. Uh, okay, so. Let's uh, let's shuffle our hit location deck up again. Ugh, the trap. Those are always no fun at all. Um, okay, so a basic action is going to be a speed two hits on a two plus for one damage. Okay, two plus. Uh, two hits to the. Uh, arm and the ch and the body. Uh, so that is Peter. Um, we're gonna do one to the arm, which makes it a light. Oh, actually, we'll do it this way. Um, let's grab this one and let's do this for now. Uh, so that's one light to the body and um, a light to the arms. Okay. Great. Okay, well that's that's Peter's turn. Um, so now let's have let's have Susan get in there. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, oh, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that's not good. Um, let's just go for it. Uh, speed two. Uh, oh, we're doing fist and tooth now, so we're gonna hit on an eight plus seven plus. Uh, so one hit. Beast's ribs. No run forward. If we attack, we have plus three understand. We gain a survival. We don't. So we are going to attack uh, um, for a six plus. Uh, we have plus one luck with this. So seven. So that's a wound, but not a crit. 
Great, so that's Susan's turn. Um, we don't have three plus understanding. All right, we're down to four wounds. And nobody has died yet. Yet. Okay, so that's Susan's turn. Uh, Edmund, can Edmund make it? One, two, three, four, five. He cannot make it, but he'll come this way. He'll come right there. Actually, he'll go right here. Okay. All right, so now it's the White Lion's turn. We are gonna do Chomp, closest threat facing in range. So that's gonna be Peter, who's already pretty wrecked. Uh, speed one, hits on a two plus, and always hits the head location. That's gonna be a hit. It's gonna be one hit to the head. Uh, so we're just gonna do a heavy to the head. So he gets knocked down. Boop. And that's that. So that gets discarded. All right, our turn. Oh, we've got to flip everything over. So Edmund, or sorry, Peter cannot go because he's knocked down. He'll stand up at the end of the next monster's turn. So, huh. so let's go ahead and have Susan go ahead and attack with her with her fist and tooth. Speed two, it's on a seven plus. That's two misses. Um, and then she's going to, one, two, three, four, five. She's gonna step back here. One, two, five, okay. One, two, three, four, five. So now Edmund's gonna move in. Uh, he is going to attack with his founding stone. Stone, speed two, six plus. Okay, one hit impervious the glorious main so we just need to roll off with crit we don't crit so nothing happens Ugh. okay so that is Edmund's turn um, now we're gonna do oh Susan already went right yep um, and then Lucy's turn now so she's gonna come in here and Lucy's gonna attack with her founding stone speed two it's on a six plus one hit a beast's femur so just a straight just a straight wound location so we're gonna hit on a five plus wound on a five plus six that's a wound I'll take it all day long we're down to three wounds um, oh shoot I'm already getting rules wrong guys I forgot we we're at, we we're at plus one damage um, so Peter would have gotten a severe injury instead of a heavy on the head. Ooh, so let's let's go ahead and roll it now. And I printed out this so I don't have to open the book 17 times. So here we go. Head. Come on, Peter. Three. <sighs> Decapitation. You are dead. <sighs> Oh, dang it. Why did I remember that rule? So Peter has died already. Ah, shoot. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, okay, all right. So that's the end of our turns. Let's just move on. Um, these things happen all the time. Uh, so now we discard Enraged, actually. So now we have four wounds again. Ah, bummer. Okay, White Lion's turn again. Power SWAT. Oh, we get rid of our plus one damage token. Uh, closest threat facing. Uh, closest threat in field of view. So that's going to be Susan. So she's going to come around here. Uh, speed one. It's on a two plus, And we're going to suffer knockback six. Three is going to hit. Uh, we're going to hit on the arms. Um, Susan has used her survival, so we just have to take it. So one damage to the arms. So that gives us a light on the arms. And we suffer knockback six. All right. Awesome. Well, that's two damage. So actually, that's a heavy on the arms. So she'd be knocked down yeah two damage great okay 
three cards left. So we have um, Chomp, Enraged, and Power Swat. So. Here we go. Okay, our turns again. So we're not going to be able to do much. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Edmund's going to come in. He's going to attack with his Founding Stone six plus. Nothing. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. She's going to come in. Lucy's going to come in. She's going to attack with her Founding Stone. It's on a six plus. One hit, the straining mech. So we wound uh, on a uh, five plus, five plus, eight, that's a wound. Okay, not a crit, which I was hoping for, but that's okay. We'll take it where we can get it. All right, so that's that. It's everybody's turn. We flip over. Um, all right, it's the white lion's turn. Chomp, closest threat facing in range. So she's not a threat because she's knocked down. Closest threat in field of view. Nobody's in field of view. So now we sniff. Uh, so sniff is the white lion sniffs the air and ends its turn. Until the end of the next round, all survivors are now threats despite any effect to say otherwise. So good. So now it's the end of the white lion's turn. She stands up. Two, three, four, five. She is not going to be able to get up there. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to stay right there just in case he runs forward. So he'll be right in front just in case. So, okay. Let's have Edmund go. Edmund's going to attack his founding stone. I, I always say spawn for some reason. Six plus. One hit. The beast's flank. So we'll gain the priority target token. But... Um, We'll take it. Uh, so that's going to be a Founding Stone is going to be a five plus to wound. A two is going to fail. Okay. Man. Uh, so that was Edmund's turn. Uh, so let's have Lucy go. So Lucy will attack with her Founding Stone. Six plus. Two misses. Ugh. And then we'll have, we'll have Susan go. One, two, three, four, five right there. Okay. White Lion's turn. So I think this one's going to be enraged. So it's a mood. So it comes into play. We gain that plus one damage token right here. And then we draw an AI card. The only AI card left is Chomp. Closest threat facing in range. This is going to be here. So we're going to go after Susan. Speed one. Uh, hits on a two plus and always hits the head location. Two. Uh, so. Um, we now are, are in raid, so we're plus one damage, so that's two damage, so she suffers a severe head injury, which is amazing. Let's roll this severe head injury. Ten. Destroyed tooth. If you have three plus courage, you boldly spit the tooth out and gain plus two insanity. Otherwise, the blow sends you sprawling and you're knocked down. I will take that all day long. Okay. All right, so now Chomp is discarded. Um, it's everybody's turn again. So Susan is down for the count, so we'll go ahead and flip hers over. Edmund's gonna come in. It's kind of precarious because Susan's right there in front, but we've gotta do what we gotta do. So uh, Edmund's gonna attack with his Founding Stone. Hits on a six plus. Hit. The beast's elbow. Oh no. This is a failure. If we miss, uh, it runs forward and grabs Susan. So, do not want that to happen. So, we have to hit uh, five plus to wound. Come on. Three. Okay. So, it goes forward six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, they suffer one damage per monster level. So, she suffers one damage to the waist, so she has an armor there, so that's good. That just gets discarded. Great, good job, Edmund. Um, and then everybody else is way out of range, so we're gonna go one, two, three, five, right there. Yep, and that's it. So now we're gonna do Chomp again, closest threat facing. 
close to the starting field of view. I'm going to turn here. We're going to one, two, three, four. Right there. We're going to take uh, Lucy, right? Yeah. Lucy, speed one uh, for two damage. It always hits the head. One, yes. This is like the worst card because we consistently get chomp, head location, head location, severe injury, severe injury, especially with with uh, enraged in play. So, okay. End. So we're going to have um, Lucy come around. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Lucy's going to attack with her founding stone. Speed two. Hits on a six plus. Nothing. Uh, Susan's going to come in. She's going to attack with her Piston 2, 7 plus, 1 hit. The Beast's Ear, Failure, Lightline jumps back without turning, move the monster one step directly away from the attacker, cancel all unresolved hits. So that's not bad. Actually, we would kind of like that, but um, okay. So it's going to be a um, 6 plus with Piston 2. 9, which is a crit. Um, so... That's a wound, so we're down to one wound remaining. The force of the blow damages the white lion's ear. It is now partially death. The white lion gains minus one accuracy token. All right. Good. Okay, um, and then uh, we're going to have um, Edmund come in. One, two, three, four, five, right there. And he's going to attack uh, with his... Founding Stone, so it's on a 7 plus. Come on. This is it. We got this. The Beast's Maw. Um, if we fail, we're not going to fail. We're going to get it. Uh, we're going to hit. Uh, we're going to wound on a 5 plus. 4. Great. Uh, the monster roars triumphantly. Roll 1d10 on a 4 plus. 1. Good. Nothing happens. Okay. All of our turns, everything flips over. Great, so now we perform a basic action since there's no, no other AI cards. So we close the survivor in field of view. So we're gonna attack Edmund. Uh, speed two, hits on a two plus, or three plus now because of minus one accuracy. Two hits. Uh, the chest and the head for two damage each. The body and the head. So we are going to spend Edmund's survival to dodge the head and we'll take the body, which turns into a heavy. He gets knocked down, but is still alive. So we don't have to do that severe injury table. So that was worth a dodge. Great. Okay, our turn. Edmund's out of the picture because he's knocked down. We're gonna finish it though. Let's let's have Susan. One, two, three, four, five. Right here. She's gonna finish it off with her. Nope. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Lucy's gonna finish it off with her founding stone. Speed two. It's on a six plus. Nope. Like I said, Susan's gonna finish it off with her piston tooth. Seven plus. One hit. Clever ploy, a, a trap yet again. Basic action, speed two, it's on a three plus. One miss, one hit to the head. Two damage because of our plus one damage. Uh, Susan is going to suffer another severe injury to the head. So she's gonna get knocked down. Severe head injury. Oh, I already know what that is. <laughs> Decapitation. <laughs> oh, I know this game, guys. I know how brutal it is, but oh, every single time we discard enraged, lose our minus one damage token. <sighs> That's it. That's all of our turns. White Lion's turn. Oh, we need to shuffle our hit locations. Hit lo 
locations are shuffled. White Lion's turn. Basic action. Speed 2. It's on a 3 plus. Don't have that plus 1 damage. We're attacking Lucy. 2 hits. West. Uh, the West. The West. The Waste. She have 1 armor token, so that gets taken away and one to the chest um, so that though the body so that's just a light injury to the body okay Edmund gets up Lucy's gonna come around one two three four five oh shoot um, I have messed up I forgot that when uh, Susan died there's an AI card, so we wouldn't have performed a basic action. We would have done the Enraged, so let's do that. Enraged is back in play. Uh, plus one damage token. Sorry. Um, the body goes back. The waist goes back. Sorry. It's been a while since I played, so I'm still a little rusty. Lucy comes around. She attacks. Speed two. Uh, it's on a six plus for their pounding stone. One single hit. The fleshy gut. Pro failures perform a basic action. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, we're going to hit on a five plus crit. Um, so that's a hit. So the white line is defeated and the white line vomits all over you. It feels awesome. Gain one random uh, basic resource and three insanity. So Lucy gets three insanity and a white line basic resource. Let's see. A random basic resource so it throws up its lunch all over us so let's see all right here we go monster hide okay so the white line is defeated uh, we are victori victorious half of us are victorious I guess um, so let's see what happens here it's been a while since I've defeated the prologue white line Okay, so survivors are victorious. By scavenging the monster's corpse, the survivors earn resources. This is in addition to any resources earned from critical wounds during the showdown. Uh, four white lion resources. All right, one, two, three, four. So we got the great cat bone, eye of the cat, which is great. Great cat bone again, and the lion testes. All right, and then we get four basic resources. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four. We got uh, whatever we want. A skull, well, that's good. Uh, monster bone and love juice, perfect. I love it. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Turn the page to creature sh settlement. So we, we go into the settlement phase at this point. So uh, let me get all that set up and uh, kind of decide what my first actions are going to be. And then I'll uh, come right back. Okay, I think I've got it all figured out. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. But um, so we, we are the returning survivors, two of them. Um, Lucy and Edmund have returned, so I've gained a hunt XP for them. Um, and we, we trigger first, uh, we trigger our first settlement event, which is the first story. So let's read that. Uh, the first day settlement event will help you set up your settlement. It is the first event of any new campaign. The survivors wander, drawn to a blooming light in the distance. They find the scene, a serene comfort of a towering pile of lanterns and a small collection of scared people. On a deep instinctual level, they know this area is safe and they made it their they make it their home. Roll one d10 to determine your starting population and record it result record the result on the back of the settlement record sheet. Choose and record genders of for unnamed survivors. Uh, you may name an unnamed survivor and create their survivor record sheet at any time during the settlement phase. So let's uh, let's roll. Here we go. Come on, big numbers. 
Uh, one to three. Six unnamed survivors plus the returning survivors. So low, low, low. So we gain six more. Um, I'll name them later because I forgot to grab that sheet um, of Narnia characters. But we'll just do. We're just gonna. We're just gonna go male, female, male, female, male, female. So that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our population. Um, well, hold on. Uh, Susan is dead, and so is Peter. Enter near zero. Enter near zero. Okay. So we are on at population eight right now. That's not a good way to start. Not a good way to start. Okay. Um, Return to the settlement section of the first story and proceed to returning survivors. The first day settlement event card is going to go back in here to replace Morbid Fog Bank. Um, okay. So now we trigger returning survivors. Um, so first words. That, uh, so we nominate a survivor to utter the first words. Oh, and Susan was the one with our plus one strength and she died. She died. Uh, so let's have Edmund... Edmund will will uh, will utter the first word, so he gains plus one courage. Okay, the nominated survivor steps forward and gains plus one courage. They lead the other survivors in learning to speak to one another. They discuss their situation, realizing they must hunt to live. Add the white lion to the query list on the settlement record sheet. Your settlement gains a language innovation, which I forgot to pull out. There it is. Okay, our survival limit goes uh, up one, so our survival limit is now two, because it starts out at one. All survivors can now encourage. Encourage is once per round, if, sta if standing, spend one survival to call out to a non-death survivor. They stand up if knocked down. So that's our first innovation. Great. Um, build the innovation deck, which I did. Uh, the, we have uh, six cards, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's uh, ammonia, drums, hobble, inner lantern, paint, and symposium. So there's our innovation deck is built. Um, now we do the gl glowing center. Armed with language, the nominated survivors aptly named, uh, aptly names the glowing center of their home, the lantern horde. A settlement gains a lantern horde settlement location. Search the large settlement location cards for lantern horde. Boom, there we go, and place it. Uh, the nominated survivor sits in front of the lantern, horde in awe, and gains plus one understanding. Okay. They must skip the next hunt phase as they ponder the meaning of existence. Okay. Return to the first story to complete the settlement phase. So, we basically go through the, the, the regular setup at this point. So, uh, we gain endeavors. Uh, so, we only have two returning survivors so we gain two endeavors uh we update the timeline oh we we, we should have gained endeavors before we update the timeline so we are, we are now in lantern year one <coughs> we triggered returning survivors <coughs> so that's all good now we update the death count so we have two dead one two so now we trigger um, the our death principle, um, the principle death. So let's mark that off. Okay. Principle death. The group must decide what to do with the first survivor corpse. Choose one. So we have a choice between graves and cannibalize. Um, I think in general, so graves gives us. Um, all new survivors gain plus one understanding. When a survivor dies during the hunt or showdown phase, we gain two endeavors. When a survivor dies during the settlement phase, gain one endeavor. That's a lot of endeavors, um, and I, like I, I like that, but I think cannibalize is going to be our best option. So uh, we're going to go with cannibalize. So our survival limit goes up one. So we're now at three survival max per survivor. Um, whenever a survivor dies, draw on one basic resource and add it to the settlement storage. Do not gain a resource if a survivor is lost, ceases to exist, or is exiled. I 
think that is the the best the best bet. So we're gonna mark off on our settlement sheet that we're picking cannibalize. There you have it. Okay. So now we do uh, the first harvest. So we need to roll. The settlement decides to harvest the body for resources. The settlement gains death principle cannibalize. Find and place the card, um, and then we roll a d10. One. The settlement ritualistically divides the corpse with a sh sharp stone and grimly consumes the dead flesh. Gain a founding stone starting gear. Okay, we gain that founding stone back that we lost. Um, all departing survivors gain plus three insanity. So let's see. Um, plus three insanity. Fun time. I'll just mark that up here. Okay. Man, I wish that we got a six through ten because we would have gained. Yeah, we gained plus one speed. Blech. Man, we are, I'm rolling horribly this time. Um, okay, well, there's the principal death. That's great. Um, now, hopefully we're going to do intimacy next, so I'm going to go ahead and turn there. But uh, we've checked our milestones. We have gotten our, our milestones are done, uh, so far anyways. We've, we've uh, updated the death count. We've, uh, somebody has died. And there you go. Uh, so, so there you have it. Um, so we're going. We got the lantern horn, horde, and two innovations. So, or, uh, two endeavors. Sorry, not innovations. So normally, I'd spend three in, uh, endeavors on building the uh, the bone smith, the skinnery, and the organ grinder. We only have two, so I'm going to build the bone smith with that one endeavor. So the bone smith is built. Um, I'm going to use uh, the skull resource to build the skull helm. So that gives us plus three to our head location, which is huge at the beginning. Um, and then I'm going to spend a, a great cap bone and a whatever to build the bone axe, which is a good starting weapon. Uh, it's frail. It's savage. Once per attack, if you critically wound, cause one additional wound. This effect does not apply to impervious hit locations. Awesome. So there's that. And then uh, we're going to spend one more bone to uh, purchase the, or to build the bone darts. So this is good ranged for when that white lion does his, his uh, ground fighting or roll over or whatever. We have that range so we can get in there without taking a wound. So there's that. <clears throat> we're going to keep our cat eye circlet, or to cat, our cat eye for the cat eye circlet. So that's going to go in, in storage. Uh, we're going to use uh, monster hide, the lion testes, and the monster bone to innovate. So we take our innovation deck, shuffle that up, we get two. So here we go. Paint and hovel. Um, so hovel is really good. We get plus one survival, but I think I'm going to get paint because um, that uh, dash is really, really powerful. So I'm going to add the um, the pain consequences to the innovation deck off camera. Uh, this is going to get added to storage. And lastly, we have Love Juice. So Love Juice is an organ. During the settlement phase, you may archive this to intimacy. Nominate survivors must be able to consume. So we're going to trigger intimacy. Here we go. Nominate one consenting male and one consenting female. So we're just going to do unnamed, unnamed male one and unnamed male two, and we're we're just going to go with that for now. Uh, and we are going to the first time your settlement gives birth to a new survivor, gain plus one population from intimacy. The survivors ponder existence and principle new life. Uh, as your settlement grows in size, don't forget to apply the chosen new life principle. It will greatly affect the outcome of the campaign. So we roll a d10. Nine. So the settlement celebrates a twice fortunate event. A pair of healthy newborn survivors enters the world. Plus two population. Yes. Another male. Another female. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So our population is now ten. Good. That was a good roll. That was a very good roll. Okay, so now we do principal new life. Okay. The group must decide how to raise their young. So we can do survival of the fittest or protect the young. So I did survival of the fittest last time and I struggled really bad with population. I mean, uh, the survival of the fittest is awesome because we have plus one survival limit. When rolling on intimacy, we roll twice and pick the lowest score, which is bad. Uh, and then all current and newborn survivors gain plus one strength and plus one evasion, which is amazing. Um, and we get once per lifetime, a survivor may reroll a single roll result. They must keep the new result. Oh, it's so good. But protect the young when rolling on intimacy, we roll twice and keep the better of the two results. And we pick one. Um, oh, I don't know. Um, survival of the fittest is so good. I think we're gonna do survival of the fittest again against my better judgment. I had kind of thought in the back of my head that we were gonna do protect the young, but we have to do survival of the fittest i think if we want to if we want to make a um make a stand here and, and make our way in life so uh we do uh without mercy so the toys are taken from the child and replaced with cold stone face shards training begins immediately uh we we do survival of the fittest um and we roll a d10 come on Does this count six uh, the child is raised as a pure warrior, leaving compassion and fear behind. The newborn survivor gains plus two courage, a tough fighting art, and one random disorder. Okay, so I think it's both um, since we had twins, so uh, plus two courage. Uh, fighting art. So let's go ahead and roll that. And a disorder. All right, so fighting arts. Oh, the tough fighting art. Um, let's grab that. Tough fighting art. There it is. So when rolling on a severe injury table, unless you roll a one, add plus one to the result. So that's good. Tough fighting art. Leave that out and I'll add just a character sheet and a disorder. Random disorder. So there's there's uh, the um, I can't remember the uh, the the uh, fan based um, Drifter Knight. Uh, the Dif Drifter Knight disorder cards are already added on here, so you can kind of see them. Like you can pick them out. They're black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle this up. I'm going to roll a d10. And then, then it kind of keeps me from cheating. So, uh, so here we go. All right, 10, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hemophobia. The mere sight of blood, it makes you lightheaded. Your serious gore can knock you out during the showdown. Whenever a survivor in you get the bleed token knocked down. Okay. Okay, so that's one disorder. Let's do the other one now. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, this is a Drifter Night one. Morbid curiosity. You thirst for knowledge is unquenchable. You must investigate if the opportunity to do so arises. Whenever a random survivor is nominated to roll on the table, you are nominated instead. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I like that. All right, so there you have it. That's the new life principle. Uh, so we get survival of fittest. So let's add that real quick. New child is born. Boop. Um, survival of the fittest. Boop. All right, we got language and paint. Innovations. Okay, so there's that. Um, all right, um, we develop. Well, that's done we prepared departing survivors so um that'll do it for this uh episode thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoy it um 
we'll get into new content here soon. Um, I, I really can't wait to to face Spidiculies and um, and also the Drifter Knight. That should be a lot of fun. So uh, new content is always exciting, especially as hard as it is, as it is to get right now. So uh, thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully you enjoy it. If you have any recommendations on how to um, better uh, um, make it a more enjoyable experience for you guys, please leave a comment. Uh, I'm up to change anything and everything. So uh, anyways, uh, see you guys next time.